social media leaving you in the lurch, making you feel sick, leaving, putting you in some form of, form of pain. Tonight we have Tracy Warren on who's going to fix your pain points when it comes to social media. Watch. Stay tuned. <laughs> What is that noise? <laughs> Mom sometimes forgets that she is it was not it muted during that. Yes, sorry. Uh, so we have okay. Tracy Warren on. Um, no, I just hello. skipped your part, today. Yes. Hello and <laughs> welcome to Soho Insights, uh, episode 68. And it's brought to you by Parallels. The company behind the Plus Control Panel. The control panel you need to use if you host your website anywhere. As a small office, home office business. All of our web hosting clients do. And Ovali. At Ovali, we sell hosting. In that respect, we are a little like GoDaddy, except that Ovali is owned by women and run by women. We offer you <laughs> and the same services we use to build our own business. At Ovali, we simply want you want to help you create that something for you. Hello, I'm Kathy. And I'm Jen, and like I was starting to say earlier, <laughs> we, had a little we, we record a show there. every Monday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 10 Eastern Time, and it's all about the small office, home office insights. If you are building a business from your home office, maybe you have a brick and mortar and you do kind of that during the day and the home office at night, we're, the show is for you. So we have Tracy Warren on as a guest, and she's the owner of Ready, Set, Grow Marketing. It's in the and right behind. Yeah, it's a she's, very pretty website. She's too. a big name in the Seattle mm -hmm. area, um, and I'm sure across the United States, around the world, really. But she's got a very influential voice as far as what small business owners should know when it comes to social media. She teaches at one of our local colleges, and she's got a very level-headed view when it comes to um, Twitter, Facebook, etc. And she communicates it well with small businesses. So we're well, excited about having her on. Very. And she knows everyone um, that is anyone actually in this area. And I am amazed at <laughs> the circle of people that connect with her, follow her. And you all have to listen to how well she can really communicate and tell her story of um, social media. So. Yeah, so tonight what our goal is that when you walk away that some of your social media pain points will have been cured. Cured. And so whether that is trying to figure out where to go to learn about social media, one of our questions that we're going to be asking is about those big name coaches that you spend thousands of dollars with to learn how to do Twitter. Do you really um, have to do that? So. Tracy's going to get be giving her opinion on that, and she says it's somewhat qu controversial. <laughs> um, but I mean, there's a lot of ways that you can go with it, and I want to. I want to. I'm definitely excited to hear about what her opinion is on that. Um, but other than our guest, do we have any other fun things to talk about? We're pretty boring around here. <laughs> 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 we work, and mm. we. P I played with the grandson today in the sunshine. It actually was sunny today, which. It's kind of amazing. Well, it's been sunny the last few days. We're out in the Seattle area, so. and so whenever sun comes out, I feel like everything gets brighter, and the phone doesn't ring as often. <laughs> <laughs> because everyone's out. Everyone's but outside. I will say, Jen has uh, a chat on Wednesday that Ovali team's going to go to and support and listen to some great ladies talk. Oh, that's right. Yeah, if you're in the Seattle area, um, the Crave Company, one of our hosting members, they do coffee chats. And it's actually across the United States and in Canada yeah, they that have they're a doing great it this week. And it's really interesting. If you're in one of the cities, you can go to the CraveCompany.com and hear more, find out more about what cities this coffee chat is in. But it's about whether or not women can collaborate or compete, what, we're, what our tendency is to do and a discussion around that. Um, so it, it'll be fun and we'll really in, interesting women show up at these Crave Chats that I don't usually see out and about on in different events. Um, um, but we've gotten to know quite a few throughout the years, uh, the women-owned businesses that are around there in the Crave Chats. Yeah. Um, I wanted to say she is actually going to be YFE, your young female entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You'll be talking 
strictly about yeah. that one. Well, and Young Female Entrepreneurs, another fun thing we're adding onto the Ovali.tv family. So we've yeah. got a Thursday night live stream that I do at 6, um, 6, six Pacific, 9 Eastern, and that uh, highlights different young female entrepreneurs along with some guests that um, talk about issues that are happening right now in youth entrepreneurship. Yeah, they've been um, great. Yeah, they've been really fun. And then, of course, tomorrow night is our other uh, small, small businesses. Small businesses do it better, mm -hmm. and we are interviewing our client, Julie Austin, who is a, a photographer of pets. Uh, I just not even kidding. She photographs yeah, she dogs so and cats and horses, and she makes a living of doing it. it. She wanted to make a living of doing what she loves to do, and that's being around animals and photography. And I have to say, I love her way of um, thinking too. The passion went first, and then she came into talk she, about a yeah. vertical. She actually <laughs> uh, she bought a house recently too on the money that she's earned throughout her dog sitting, dog walking, and now photography business. So yeah. can't wait to talk to her. That'll be a fun show. And again, that's at seven um, and ten, seven Pacific, ten Eastern. Um, so before we bring in Tracy Warren, I wanted to just give one big thanks to Parallels, who's one of our sponsors, as mentioned at the very beginning, and tell you a little bit more about the Plesk panel. Um, Carissa, who's on the show tomorrow night, uh, she is actually um, going to be teaching a class on a Parallels product. So Parallels is a control panel that Ovali provides to our clients who... Uh, the panel is made for small business owners that don't necessarily have a budget to rely on designer marketing, um, a designer marketing team to help them set up email addresses, manage hosted applications like their CRM, or even do some simple website maintenance. So um, along with this, so this is the control panel that you get when you host with Ovali, and it's with it's Parallels beautiful. Plus panel. Yeah, it's really nicely laid out. Um, but the biggest thing with this is the web presence builder, which if, you know, you might have a custom website or even a WordPress website, but the web presence builder is so easy to use, drag and drop modules. This is great for event tabs, landing pages, etc. And so uh, what Chris is going to be teaching in the webinar in April for Web Presence Builder is not only how to just publish a Web Presence Builder DIY website in a couple hours, but how to really customize it to make it something that works for your brand, uh, making sure that colors and fonts and all that fun stuff is up. And you can go to ovali.com to find out more about that event. It's free and it's a webinar, so you can watch it in your pajamas. It should be easy to for all business owners to be able to launch their own websites and emails. And uh, go to ovali.tv slash parallels to find out more about how they are making the lives of small business owners that much easier. So ovali.tv slash parallels. Thank you so much, Parallels. Thank you, Parallels. Love your products. Oh, yes. And also Can't love that you're enough. sponsoring the show. Um, so let's go ahead and bring Tracy Warren in. She is the incredible woman that we've been talking about <laughs> since the very beginning of the woman. show. Um, so let's go ahead and introduce her. Hello. Hi, Hello. Yay. Can I um, bring you ladies with me everywhere to introduce me? <laughs> that would be really, really awesome. Um, we love you, yeah, Tracy. Yeah, Tracy speaks at a lot of different conferences, and like we were saying, she teaches the college level. Um, so, Tracy, why don't you tell us? I mean, yes, we did give well, you kind I of a shiny. I was going to ask her that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> See, we have a, a little note thing here. And it's my turn now. So oh my goodness. it's hard to get a word in edgewise sometimes with this daughter of mine. Um, okay, Tracy, <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself. A little bit about myself. Yes. That is like, I would rather die than talk about myself. However, <laughs> um, I will talk a little bit about my business. So a couple of years ago in 2009, I had a really bad year. Um, we lost, I lost a number of family members and was just kind of in a fog for a while. But this Twitter, I'm sorry, this Facebook thing kind of surfaced. And during my darkest times, it really, it was a way for me to reach out to my friends. In fact, I was a little bit of a Facebook chat stalker. Um, honestly, I, I was lonely and I needed some support. And so Facebook kind of became my refuge. And over the in the course of that, I learned how to use it. I learned how to help other businesses or how to help businesses. And I started helping a girlfriend of mine with her business. And then when I sort of came out of the fog, I thought, you know, I could do this as a business. And then when I started talking to my other, some of my other friends who are business owners and coaches, they agreed. And so Ready, Set, Grow Marketing was born. 
That's okay. a very <laughs> nice little beginning story. That's uh, that's inspiring, actually. So now, um, as far as Ready, Set, Grow goes, what are the services that you offer? Because you have some pretty big name clients too under this under this I, brand. We're impressed. I, I have been able to help some pretty cool people. So I do three things primarily. One, I teach workshops because I want to be able to help even the small business owner with just help getting started, help knowing how to use this great, these great tools that we have. And that's really how I look at them as tools. So I teach workshops. I coach business owners one-on-one. -on -one, and I have some really great people that I'm working with right now where we meet every six weeks or so. And we, I answer their questions and then kind of give them direction how to move forward. And then we review six weeks from now and add something new to that. Or I help the business owner that just doesn't have time to add another thing to their plate. And I actually act as their page manager slash social media strategy manager. I'm not really sure what to call myself, but I am the business. And, and more than that, I'm really part of the team that when I want them to succeed because I don't feel like I've succeeded until they do. That's um, what uh, all of our business, uh, all of our clients are small businesses or most of them. How would they um, get started in social media? What I'm really suggesting for people to do now is to pick one platform and get good there and then add. Um, I think that sometimes people get overly enthusiastic and think, well, I need to be everywhere. I need to be on LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter and P Pinterest and every other social media site. And it just gets overwhelming to the point of inaction. And so, but the other thing to remember is that Facebook is not the end all. It's just a piece of the marketing puzzle. I think sometimes people go, well, I have a Facebook business page. Uh, sort of the old adage with websites was if you build it they will come I think that's kind of transferred over to Facebook pages and it just doesn't happen that way but if you can start in one place get comfortable and good at it and then add but it's also about where where are your clients and potential clients if they're on Facebook great if they're not maybe you need to find another way Seriously, and you know what's interesting is that because, I mean, for the majority of our businesses, all of our clients, our customers are on Facebook, mm -hmm. um, but what's really interesting is when you've looked at, and I've read this in a few different articles, but my husband has a very niche community website. Um, mm -hmm. It's a forum, and it's amazing when certain brands get on board in this very niche forum. It's all longboarders, people that longboard in the Pacific Northwest. It's this long skateboard. And so these brands get into the forum, and they sell. They convert really well, and they create loyal followers versus his Facebook page. I mean, has a great following, too, but not necessarily, you know, not nearly the conversation that's happening on that page because it feels like you're throwing a net out to this, you know, I mean, yeah. everyone lives on Facebook. So well, right. what we like to do is... So anyway, uh, I like your point. Yes, I like it too. And what we like to do with Facebook is somehow we have to connect with our clients because uh, we are online. There's no store to walk into. And I think Facebook's a great place to start yeah. and to get right. to know us. Yeah. And I, I think like the other thing is that it may not be about the people who have clicked like on your page. It might be who they know. Yes. 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 That's actually the true reach is not just the people who you know, but the people who they know and who they know and so on. Correct. That's a really yes. good point because mom stalks people that like <laughs> us on Facebook. I have to. I want to know who they are. <laughs> she And so she'll send emails to our team saying, this person said this on her Facebook wall to so, her friend. And you, cause she, hey. It was a public, you know, public They talk profile, about us. So. And I want to know. So it's pretty cool. There. Anyway, at, at least while we're growing. So I want to move on. So yeah. Tracy, okay. um, you teach, we mentioned, at a college level. Maybe you mm -hmm. could tell us a little bit about, because people all the time are asking us, where should I find out about this? Who do I, who would you recommend to hear about this? Um, what do you talk about in these programs? I mean, if you were to pay money to get credits and to graduate or whatever, have a major in social media. That is what's so in cool. This, what's in this program that you're teaching and who enrolls in a class like this? 
Well, actually, what I'm teaching, I'm teaching out two colleges. So starting wow. next week, I'm teaching a class at North Seattle Community College. It's just a part of the business program. And the class is called Intro to E-Business. And it's part of the entrepreneurship program. And so the average age of the student at North Seattle Community College is actually 35. So I imagine that my class will be very diverse. And it's the first time I'm teaching a class that's all in-person teaching. The last class I taught at Shoreline was, excuse me, an online class. But starting in the fall, business students at Shoreline, so it's a business program where they can add a social media marketing certificate to the business program. So that's it's a good sort idea. of like a writer. Yes. So in the fall, they'll take... I hope they like me because they're stuck with me for a year. Um, <laughs> in the fall, they'll take intro to e-business with me. And then in the winter quarter, they'll take a social media marketing, more specific class that we haven't named yet. And then the most exciting thing is in the spring quarter next year, every one of my students will do internships. So Ooh. you talked... You talked earlier about my connections, and I'm really excited that through what I'm doing at the community colleges, I'm going to be able to help my friends who are business owners because I can provide social media interns for them next year. And then even this quarter in the spring, one of the projects my students will do is a marketing plan for a small business. So I'll be able to partner up my business owner friends with my students so that they can actually work with business owners to create a marketing plan that business owners could put into place right now. It's really exciting. Well, you may contact us, by the <laughs> way, for that. In fact, that's the answer that I get from everybody. So I need to create a survey or something to let the students decide. I don't want it to be my responsibility to pick. Yeah. Um, uh, so is this I like the bribes, I suppose. <laughs> okay, we'll remember I'm that. I'm not beyond that. Okay. Chocolate. <laughs> Um, I know, doesn't that sound good? But uh, is this the first time this has happened? I mean, that there's actually been a class like this? It's the first time at these local colleges. I think that Edmonds Community College has been offering something. I'm just not exactly sure what it is. Let's, we'll Uh, list this on ovali.tv tomorrow too, so people can check it out. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I get, I have a range of students. My, the class that I taught this fall, I had traditional students. I had students kind of from all over the world, which was pretty cool. And then I had a guy in my class who was a 20 year veteran of Boeing. So it's a wide range of students. So Tracy, are these people that, are they just starting their businesses? Are they in the research phase? Are they not even thinking about owning a business? Good question. Yeah. I think... There's kind of a range. So this last year, I had them write a marketing plan for a fictitious business instead of partnering up with someone. And some of them actually had businesses that they were trying to work. Simple, sometimes some simple businesses, some more complex. So it might be that they are business owners, they want to be business owners, but that or they're just forced to take the class um, <laughs> and have no desire to ever have a business. No. Yeah. No. Well, let's, uh, now, okay, let's say that I am a business owner right now. Mm-hmm. What would you recommend let's as far as, no, <laughs> I'm saying I, I am a business owner, but hypothetically, if someone was coming up to you and said, hey, Tracy, I want to have coffee with you. I am I own a business, and I just don't get the social media thing, but I've been looking at XYZ Coach, and she has a program that teaches me how to use Pinterest, Twitter, and Facebook, but it costs $1,200. Or 5000 or something. Is mm-hmm. it worth me spending that high price point? Will I get a, a high enough return in order to put the money forward? What's your opinion on this? Okay, this is where I said I might get a little controversial because... <laughs> I would like that. I don't get it. I honestly don't get that being able to charge that amount. It was interesting. I had a friend recently send me a link for, you know, here, Tracy, you can get certified on social media. I'm like, wait, that's what I'm teaching. Why do I need to pay someone else to get certified? (laughs) I, I guess 
part of what I, I don't understand is what are they doing for $1,200? They're most of the information that I teach or that any social media person teaches is available for free on the internet. Whether it's YouTube, whether it's Mari Smith having a live webinar, Social Media Examiner is filled with articles. There's so much information that's out there for free. And so I just have, I question the high dollar coaching. I imagine there can be some value, but I was talking with a gal and she said she got a quote from someone that was going to charge her $10,000 for three months worth of social media management. And I, for a small business, like a solopreneur, and I just, I can't see you getting return on that kind of investment. Yeah, um, so, I, I don't, I don't have words to say uh, that one, $10,000, that's a lot for somebody yes. to tell you what to do it took me three months to or i'm sorry three minutes to like my mouth was dropped because i just couldn't figure out what someone would be doing that you could charge that much money yeah so tracy you were saying that one of the services that you offer is being that dedicated person for a small mm -hmm. business that manages the facebook and twitter and that type of stuff and you're part of the team so what type of roi does that client experience when they are, um, when you send out tweets or Facebook on their behalf, what do they get in return for that on average? And then the second part in that question is, um, if we if a small office, home office business owner were to do the same thing, if they were to really dedicate their time and energy into it, what, could they expect the same results? Well, I'll answer the second part first. And the <laughs> so... What I teach and what I practice is social media in less than 30 minutes a day because the small office, home office business owner does not have time to spend hours on Facebook trying to build a community. And that's really what I talk about is it's a tool for creating a community that revolves around your business. So if you can log in every day, post the status, and build relationships with your 10 best clients and your 10 best prospects, then that magic ROI, that's such a hard, that's such a hard thing to measure. However, what I have seen is sales as a direct result of what's happening on Facebook. But more than that, it's really about getting found. And so can you really measure that? The example I used the other day was you have a telephone that you pay for. Well, what's the ROI of your telephone? Because your telephone is a tool, just like Facebook is a tool. And so one thing that happens with Facebook that I found is that you might meet someone at an event. Either of you might meet someone at, a, at an event. And maybe they don't need your services today, but they go find your Facebook page and they click like. And they watch. And they watch. And they watch. And they watch to see if you practice what you preach. And then six months down the, down the road... They might go, you know, I met those gals. They were really great, and I've been watching their posts. They share great information. I'm going to give them a call. And so the ROI thing, it's, it's really hard to measure. I think it's important that you ask people who you're doing business with how they found out about you. And if they found you in Google search, some of the credit might need to go to your Facebook and your Twitter and your LinkedIn activity because all of that stuff is cataloged on Google. You know, that's a very good point because we get that too when people say, oh, I found you on Google. It's like, oh, but, you know, there's a big part of Google now. Uh, mm -hmm. I think what you just said today has a whole bunch of merit. And I like the phone piece. It just the how you meet, because that's exactly what people do. They, mm -hmm. they like you. They watch you. I know we do it too. Mm -hmm. And I know our clients have done it. Um, so... What you're saying is like gold. So hopefully you're all hopefully writing people notes. people are taking notes. Yes. Yeah. So the now, Tracy, you're talking about getting found. Mm -hmm. uh, Google Plus is like the the ugly duckling in the room or whatever. People were being forced. I feel like I'm being forced to yeah. use it. And I, I'm starting to get around to liking it. Um, but so small office, home office business owners that don't have that physical address necessarily to get Google Place juice or whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. Um now, do they, uh, should they be on Google Plus? 
Is this something we have to do? The short answer is yes. And I hate to even say that because the truth of the matter is there just aren't a lot of people playing in the Google Plus sandbox right now that if I go to Google Plus once a day, it takes me less than five minutes to scroll through everything that's happened in the last 24 hours <sighs> with the people that I'm connected to. Because a lot of people are, have created an account, but don't go on and don't post. However, I read an article today that talked about how Google has changed their search algorithm. And so I actually posted it to my page, not that I'm doing an advertisement, but that what's happening now is if you have a Google Plus business page, sometimes when someone is searching, those Google Plus pages will show up in the search results where, that were previously reserved for Google Ads that are on the right-hand side. And that's free. Free. And free. So, yeah, and it's free. And so every one of my clients has a Google Plus business page. Because Another it's big nugget there. Google, yeah, it's Google Juice, and anywhere you can go to get it is going to be a benefit. Have I seen ROI in that? No. But, again, it's the being able to be found on search. Yes. And it's, you know, there's some interesting things happening because Google is friends with Twitter and Bing is friends with Facebook. And so what's going to happen over point. the course of time is, well, Google and Facebook do not get along. Anyway, <laughs> um, over the course of time, the social is going to play a much more deep role in search. So what you might see if you go to Bing or even Google, if you search for something and one of your friends has already liked something in relation to that page, a picture of your friend will actually show up in the search results. And Bing is even more integrated. Yeah, that's interesting that you say that because one of the women that we've mentioned a few times on the show, um, Joy Moxley, I'm sure you've heard of her in the Seattle area, Yo Dog Media. Uh, she mentioned on one of her Facebook posts, because I do stalk her, um, <laughs> uh, she mentioned that she spent some time on her Bing page for a while and talked mm -hmm. about a whole lot of stuff that Bing, I we don't spend any time on Bing, no, but so we're maybe we should because it's, Bing. there's a lot of really yes. interesting things in there. Okay, so we're talking about a little bit more advanced stuff than some of our our Soho clients are really getting. So now that we're on more of an advanced topic, let's say there's a virtual assistant that's watching. And she does the usual clerical things, but she's thinking about adding social media into the list of things she does to manage for a small business. Mm -hmm. Are there any things, anything that you'd recommend she watch out for as far as like a contract goes or in taking in a new client? That's a great question, and the answer might be twofold. So when I work with a client, I really like working with clients who are hands-off. So I create all the content, I do all the interaction, and I kind of like it that way. However, I know that there are virtual assistants out there where they rely on the business owner to provide them content and they post it. But I think one of the most important things is if you are a virtual assistant and you're adding that, or if you're looking to hire a virtual assistant to help you with it, is that if you're posting on Facebook, go to Facebook. If you're posting on LinkedIn, go to LinkedIn. There's a lot, there are some services out there, or not services per se, but software and tools that you can use that will allow you to auto post to all yes. platforms. And what happens is people on Facebook are, are training themselves, whether they know it or not, to ignore those kinds of posts. Yeah. And your engagement actually decreases by 70%. So one of the things I did on my personal page is I've actually hidden everything that comes from Hootsuite. And Interesting. That, that might be a little controversial too, but honestly, I want to do business and have relationships with people who want to come to where I am, and I'm on Facebook. So if you want to talk to me on Facebook, come there. Don't just send out information on Hootsuite. And the other challenge is that this has happened a number of times where a business owner will post from Hootsuite and I will respond and then never hear back again. And so that just tells me that they're not there. And if 
if they're not there, then I don't, you know, you know what I'm trying to say? No, it's such good Hmm. points right here. It's so so much fun. That's why, that's why when I said earlier about you need to find where your clients are and then go talk to them there, sort of like the longboard example. Great. If they're on a board and there's a lot of customized things like that, and I, I'm sure I'm going way off topic, but it's important that a virtual assistant actually be there and that they know your voice, that it's not about your words, that it's about the voice of the business and making sure you have plans in place for things that might happen, like a negative person coming and posting. And that's a whole Um, Yes, that's that, you know, we didn't um, bring up that. Well, um, yeah, knowing in advance having... um, yeah. What do, what what are what's ours called a disaster yeah. plan or something like that? <laughs> well, as a hosting provider, we have, we have certain have things like that. that are drafted already, and and part of that is the social media and how we respond to a negative post, mm-hmm. um, which is interesting because it's in the same line as what happens if there's a fire in or the a data tragedy. center, <laughs> something <laughs> like that. <laughs> so. <laughs> anyway, but we're prepared. Yeah, so uh, let's round it off because that's great advice for, you know, whether you're you're providing social media to another business owner or if you are a business owner that, you know, having your own voice, making sure you're communicating your voice and then being there for your community. Those are two great points. So the last piece that I want to end the night off with is a big one. It's huge. So we spend, (laughs) because this is kind of where we're at for Ovali and Mm -hmm. we've been in the social media game for a while and um, we're, we're pretty active in it. But now, how what how do you measure it? So how do you measure whether or not what you're doing is effective as far as the click-throughs go and converting people, that kind of stuff? That's what do you recommend point, for yes. that? That's a really good question. I'm not sure if I have a specific answer, but one of the things that you can do is make the Facebook insights work for you. So when you go to your business page, and with the launch of Timeline on Friday, whether if you haven't chosen it yet, it will be chosen for you yeah. on Friday. And the insights can tell you great information about how people are interacting with the page. So on the insights, it'll tell you there's a graph. So it tells you how often you post it on a specific day. It tells you how many people are talking about this. And that's a really important number. That's the people who are clicking like or commenting on your information. And then there's a third number, which is the reach. So that's the friends and the friends of friends, or I'm sorry, not friends, the people who click like on your page and then their contacts based on how they react, interact with the page. And kind of a side note, I think it's important for business owners to know that maybe they have 500 people who've clicked like on their page. And so every time they post something on their business page, they probably assume that 500 people are going to see that. Wouldn't you get, think that? <laughs> <laughs> Not actually what happens because Facebook, it, everything, social media and Google and Bing is all run by math algorithms. And Facebook actively buries boring content. So if you have a Facebook page where you're always putting out information, information, or you're putting out sales, or you're putting out mostly sales and things that people aren't interacting with and if you continue to do that and nobody clicks like and nobody comments then eventually your post won't be seen by any of the 500 people who like your page good point so every once in a while i'll be looking at my news feed and i'll go gosh i haven't seen anything from this company in a while so then i'll go to their business page and see oh They've been posting. I've just been missing it. And so what I do as an active consumer is I go in and make sure I've clicked like and commented on some of their stuff because so that their stuff will show back up in my news feed. Huh. And so yes. how do you measure that? I, I think that is the million-dollar question. There are social media analytics sites out there. A lot, some of the most effective ones are also the most expensive like Radian 6, but I think for me, I measure my social media effectiveness based on engagement. Are people engaged with me on my page? Are people asking me questions? 
when I post something, are they responding? When I tweet something, am I getting a response back? That's how, that's how I personally measure. I'm also not a numbers person. So that's for somebody who is a numbers person, there are definitely tools out there that I can definitely do some research on that and maybe post it on my page. But are people engaged with me? That's really the way I measure. Is my phone ringing? Great, then that's how I know. I like that you point out um, as far as uh, the is it's effective if people like it or if they talk back or comment, that type of thing. Because really that, like you said earlier, it's all about building community with your business. Mm -hmm. And if people are, if they're not present in the community, then it's not working. And to be present, if you're liking pages, stay active like mm-hmm. those those pages like Tracy Tracy does if she says hmm those people that uh, I've liked I haven't seen anything those are the kind of things I like to Well hear there are too. certain pages too that I actually it depending on how effective they are no matter what if they're going through the timeline I will pull them up like I know like the tone it up girls <laughs> um if you go to like <laughs> facebook.com slash tone it up well I, there's certain fitnessy type people that I pull up that pretty, inspire me or excite people. me kind of a mm-hmm. thing. And so, yeah, I think that's that's true because and what they do effectively that I think brings me back is that they are. They're building a community and people there really interact. And that's something that we as hosting providers are constantly thinking about yes. because hosting, we talked about it last week, um, hosting, people don't think of it as being something sexy. that's sexy. And um, <laughs> so we're, tr- we're trying to connect with people in a different way. And for a lot of our small office, uh, home office, definitely home-based businesses that are watching who are doing like carpet cleaning and things like that, uh, carpet cleaning isn't sexy either, but there's ways no. to spice it up that but create, everybody talk, that create has, community. Yeah, everybody has a relative or a friend that needs a carpet clean. So yeah, but, it's just but like, like Tracy was saying, if yeah. you talk about something and it's Start? just a sale, yes. then you're going to be hidden in that but time. You have to connect. Well and I do like your points tonight, Tracy. I think they are spot on. And yeah. thank you so much for thank talking you. to us. Yeah, definitely. And so you'll be able to find all of this information tomorrow at ovali.tv. Uh, we have all of our past episodes for Soho Insights. All 68 episodes will be up. Um, And another big thing before we say goodbye to Tracy is that on iTunes, we've been doing this free show that you can watch and inviting guests on and doing all the work um, for the last 68 episodes. (laughs) And we would love it if you guys have watched our show ever in the past to go over to iTunes, which is, um, we made it easy for you to find. It's bit.ly slash so it's bit.ly slash (laughs) Soho Insights. Um, And that's the short link to bring you over to iTunes, or you could search for Soho Insights on iTunes. Um, And just give it a rating. Um, It's one through five stars, and just give us some feedback on what you think about the show. We would love you forever. We're going to be asking you to do this a little bit um, a few other times this week. Um, Just as nice reminders, because we know you guys are all busy. Um, So iTunes rating, if you can, we'd so appreciate it. Um, but anyway, uh, Tracy, like Tracy. Mama's saying, thank you so much for thank coming you. on the show. Thank you. So happy you came. Where can people find you after the show? Yes. They can find me on my Facebook page at Ready, Set, Grow Marketing. Ready, comma, set, comma, grow marketing. Awesome. And we'll have links all over at ovali.tv. Thank, thank you. you again. So fun. Thanks, guys. It was. It was a lot of fun. I love these kind of shows where it just... You get so much information in, you know, like 35 30 minutes. minutes. So uh, really fast before we end, let's go over quickly what Tracy was talking about. She talked a little bit about where to find help when it goes to, comes down to social media. Um, she talked about some of those high expensive programs and whether or not it's worth it for the small business budget. We also talked about some of the more advanced pieces like Google+, Plus, um, how to bring in new clients if what you do is social media, and finally some ROI pieces. Very nice, yeah. yes. So um, next week, do we know what we're doing next week? 
Um, yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> but I still have to finalize a couple okay. things on it. Tomorrow night is Small Businesses Do It Better with Julie Austin. Please join us at 7 o'clock. Carissa and I will be talking. And um, if you're in the Seattle area for Crave event on Wednesday, Jen is back here on Thursday at 7 o'clock for Young Female Entrepreneurs. And until next week, because now we're going to watch Dancing with the Stars. That's our big fun night. <laughs> uh, thank you, Tracy. And thanks, everybody, for tuning in. See you next week. It's this coffee cup thing. <laughs> <coughs>